Hello everyone, welcome to the video on quantitative structure activity relationship. In this video, I will explain the important physicochemical properties like hydrophobic factors, electronic factors, steric factors, and how they are incorporated in QSAR. Finally, Hans equation and the advantages of QSAR and application. This is my YouTube video channel. You just type in my name G Sarajesh, you will get the videos. If you like the videos, do subscribe and share. Let's get into the topic. First, let us understand about QSAR, Quantitative Structure Activity Relationship. See, most of us know about Structure Activity Relationship. What does it indicate? What the Structure Activity Relationship will reveal the relationship between the structure and biological activity. Let me give you one example. In SAR, you might have studied that electron withdrawing group or halogens will increase the biological activity. This is what you generally uh, you see or read. Now, halogens means you have fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine are there. All of, them, all of them are halogens, but all of them will not increase the activity similarly. There is a quantitative difference is there and that is what is determined by quantitative structure activity relationships. Quantitatively, how far that particular substituent is increasing or decreasing biological activity. What is the relationship is deduced by QSCR. So this is what is given. So QSR approach attempts to identify and quantify physical chemical properties of a drug to see whether any of these properties have an effect on drugs biological activity by using a mathematical equation. See all these are put in a mathematical <coughs> equation. Then the QSR form and then the relationship is deduced. Now what are the physical chemical properties explored are? hydrophobic parameters, electronic and steric parameters. See, why these three are considered? Because evaluating them is possible. It is easier. That is the reason why hydrophobicity, electronic and steric parameters are explored. The other thing, hydrophobicity can be taken for a whole molecule or for a particular substituent. Again, this is possible. For whole molecule, it is log P. It is, it is possible to see what is the hydrophobicity of a particular uh, uh, molecule is. But electronic and steric parameters, it is only possible with substituent. It is not possible for the whole molecules. Hence, only for substituents it is considered. Now, <clears throat> how it is done? See, a range of compounds are synthesized in order to vary one physical chemical property and test its effects on biological activity. Now, how it is done is, let me put you in simple terms. See, let's say many compounds are synthesized and on y-axis, Biological activity is taken. Biological activity is taken as 1 by C. 1 by C means concentration. See, so usually why it is taken inverse of concentration is the best drugs will show maximum effect in least concentration. Hence, it is taken 1 by C. Now, let us say hydrophobicity, let us say log P values or, or whatever the physical chemical property it is taken in x-axis. Now, in moving this x-axis direction, you are increasing that property. So imagine, <coughs> let's say uh, you, you prepared a molecule for which the log P is here and the biological activity is here. You increase the log P, biological activity is found here. You increase the log P, biological activity is found here. Then a line is drawn which will cover all these data points. And for this, a particular equation is deduced. Now look at this. There is a correlation. By increasing log P, what is happening? Activity is increasing and you can put it in an equation and that equation serves as QSAR equation. Now certain things need to be considered. See, the line should be covering all the data points. See, this one is not a good fit because it is leaving all these data points. This one is a good fit because it is covering all these data points. <coughs> now, let, let us see this hydrophobicity effect. Now, hydrophobicity, hydra means water, phobic means fear. It is nothing but lipophilic in nature, lipophilicity. Now, this is very important property because lipophilic nature is very important to cross the drug cell membrane as well as to bind with receptor. Crossing cell membrane is absorption, a kinetic parameter. Binding with the receptor is a pharmacodynamic uh, property. So, both the properties are with lipophilic nature. So it is uh, very important to understand the uh, understand this lipophilic nature. Now, how it is done? It is done by partition coefficient. It is given by concentration of drug in octanol and concentration of drug in water. Why octanol? Octanol resembles very similar to our biological lipid membranes. So, if the drug concentration is very high in octanol, that indicates it is highly lipophilic in nature. 
if the drug concentrates more in water phase it is low lipophilic or more hydrophilic in nature so this is how you can get log p values <coughs> now uh, as we have seen log p values uh, in y axis biological activity and here log p values are given and this straight line will prove that proves the relationship so majority of drugs by increasing log p activity is increased so does it mean we can keep on increasing log p values no see when you keep on increasing <coughs> log p values you get a curve like parabola one to certain extent while while increasing till here you increase biological activity but after that the activity falls down so because completely lipophilic nature will will trap the drug molecules in adipose tissue so very few drug classes are there which are completely the activity is based on log p values like general anesthetics general anesthetic then in order to show their mechanism of action they need to dissolve in cell membranes cell membranes has got lipid bilayer hence the action is completely related to log p values leaving this majority of groups need to have a balance between hydrophilicity and lipophilicity now substituent hydrophobic constant see we have seen for the whole drug log p value is there for a particular substitution it is pi value let me give you an example let's say you have benzene there and you have chlorobenzene is there so how did you get this chlorobenzene by replacing a hydrogen here with a chlorine right now if you want to find out this uh the substitution uh, effect on the hydrophobicity you take the log p of this chlorobenzene and subtract with log p of benzene <coughs> then you will get the value of the substitution effect so this is how the substituent hydrophobic effect can be calculated we'll see with the example look at this see the benzene log p is 2.13 chlorobenzene log p is 2.84 you put it back in equation this minus this how much 2.84 minus 2.13 is 0.71 the same thing we are we are, we are putting in the same equation so how much it is 0.71 what does it indicate the chlorine hydrophobicity is this one means if it is positive value means it indicates it is lipophilic or hydrophobic in nature now we'll see another example benzamide see you put this subtract with this benzene one you will get minus 1.4 and what does it indicate this substituent is lower hydrophobic compared to hydrogen see everything is comparing see only the difference is here hydrogen is replaced with chlorine or hydrogen is replaced with amide so that is what this is why it is called as relative to hydrogen <clears throat> so this is how it is carried out one more advantage is look at them imagine you have you need to find out the log p value of meta chlorobenzamide so how can you do it benzene see meta chlorobenzamide the structure is this one we have chlorine here and amide here meta position is there so benzene log p value and chlorine substitution uh, hydrophobicity value and amide substitution hydrophobicity value when you put all them together 1.35 the practical value is 1.51 which is closer to this value so see the advantage of this qsr approach without synthesizing the drug without checking the hydrophobicity in octanol and water you can get a rough estimate and with that you can come up with a new lead molecules now so the substituent hydrophobicity constant see the qsr equation may include both p and pi p the whole molecule one and it is important for its absorption and binding how the drug is getting absorbed and how it is getting uh, it, it is binding with the receptor whereas pi identifies a specific reason of the molecule which might interact with hydrophobic reasons in the binding side if you see for all the receptors it is not that entire drug goes and forms a bond no in the drug a particular functional group forms a bond so this is a particular substituent so that effect so both of them are very important so the p will tell you about absorption and binding pi will tell how the interactions are going on with hydrophobic side chains <coughs> now after that electronic effects see electronic effects will give the drug ionization and polarity again both of them are important for how they cross the cell membrane and how they bind with the receptor so the these electronic constants are known as hammett substituent constant this is a measure of electron withdrawing or electron donating ability of a substituent on an aromatic ring remember this works only with aromatic ring we'll see with an example see 
benzoic acid see electronic effects i told you it is about polarity ionization so it is an acid so it it it, it gives benzoic now imagine you have a substitution at this now how this substituent will affect this ionization so you take various substituent and you put it there and you get an equation with that you can find out the effect of the substitution on this hydrolysis so the equation is this one log kx with substitution without substitution let us understand about this one now imagine see if you have an electron withdrawing group what happens see if you have electron withdrawing group whatever the charge is generated after ionization the charge will be spread over the entire molecule and it is stabilized so electron withdrawing group enhances ionization if you have an electron donating group the electron donating group will release electrons and these electrons these electrons will get repelled and reduces ionization so if you have an electron withdrawing group here you get a positive value here because here ionization is more if you have an electron donating group here you get a negative value because here the ionization is low that is what is given so this pi values depends on inductive and resonance effect and the substituent if it is in meta and para that is also dependent but it is invalid when in, when the substitution is at ortho position because of steric factors so the equations has got r and f values r talks about resonance effect f talks about inductive effect so understand this one see the constants sigma r and f can only be used for aromatic substituents and the last one is steric factors now how the steric factors will affect uh, uh, activity relationships and how how can we quantify them see this can be done <coughs> See again, the size and shape of the drug will influence how easily it can approach and interact with the binding site. A bulky substituent may act like a shield and hinder the ideal interaction between a drug. So, in these cases, a bulky substituent will reduce the activity, or a bulky substituent may help and orient a drug properly to maximize its binding and increases activity. Both may be possible. Now, how it can be reduced? See, for this. <coughs> hydrolysis of a parent ester is taken as a standard one so here a methyl substitution will be there and the substitutions are changed when you change the substitution you use this equation to find out how the hydrolysis is getting affected simple logic let us see with example see in the parent molecule a methyl substitution is there ch3 ch2 cyo ch3 now hydrolysis is taken so this is taken as a standard one so when you put this in equation both of them will get zero because this is the parent molecule now when you replace this methyl with hydrogen what happens see the value 1.24 1.24 means this is 1.24 times easily hydrolyzing than this methyl derivative so what what is the change here steric parameters the lower size enhancing hydrolysis again fluorine also the same the moment you keep on increasing the bulkiness what is happening hydrolysis is getting reduced so this is how steric parameters can be deduced now finally there is something called as hans equation hans equation is a very simple one which puts all of them together in a single equation the biological activity can be related to log p values sigma values and e values steric parameters electronic parameters and hydrophobic parameters all of them can be put together in one equation so this equation will tell us how every parameter can affect The biological activity advantages now look at this see basically you are quantifying the relationship between structure activity this is what is important one how far it is affecting how far a particular substituent is affecting that is what is quantifying it now it is also possible to make predictions leading to the synthesis of new drugs and finally the results will help understanding interaction between functional group in molecules with those of their targets these are all the major advantages there are also disadvantages are there the main problem is false correlation may result due to experimental error that may results in false molecule second one you need a large data set large enough data set if that is not there you cannot predict properly and finally qsr approach may be successful but it is not that all the time you expect a positive result no what all the applications it can predict the activity it can predict the toxicity and lead compound optimization is possible so this is about qsr lecture if you like the video content do subscribe and share thank you for watching this video